Well, another piece of evidence that people change when they get to Washington. It was just a few decades ago that a young Hillary Rodham was vocal in her opposition, not just to the Vietnam War, but to one of its heads, Henry Kissinger. But yesterday, she introduced the former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State under President Nixon at a conference hosted by the State Department. There are some ironies, of course, but some critics are calling this an insult to history. Joining me to talk more about this is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, talk a little bit about this. I mean, of course, um, when you get to be the Secretary of State, you've got to do certain things, but a lot of people find this just appalling. What do you think about this? Well, Henry Kissinger, whose real name is Heinz Kissinger, uh, after all, uh, he's probably the most prominent unindicted war criminal roaming around today. Uh, it's, it's just kind of uh, surreal with the coup attempt in Ecuador that this looks like it's hearkening back to Kissinger's policies in Latin America, which saw the overthrow and murder of Salvador Allende in Chile, the uh, Kissinger's uh, prompting of the creation of Operation Condor and Plan Mercurio, which uh, saw uh, uh, people being disappeared and kidnapped from various uh, Latin American countries, leftist uh, activists, and uh, now we have Hillary Clinton praising Kissinger to the, uh, to the nines. Uh, and also, uh, we should mention also at this conference is Richard Holbrook. He is the State Department head of the Afghanistan-Pakistan policy. A lot of people today and yesterday uh, with news of this conference happening, they're drawing sort of a, a direct line from some of those policies that happened back in the Vietnam era to some of the policies that are going on right now in Afghanistan. Talk a little bit about that. Well, after all, when uh, Richard Holbrook, um, up until 1970, was part of the Kissinger team uh, in the Nixon White House, helping to craft Vietnam policy, including uh, uh, Operation Phoenix, which saw the indiscriminate assassination of uh, South Vietnamese political and religious leaders. Uh, so again, we see some of this playing out in Afghanistan and Pakistan with target, targeted killings. That of course, kill, they kill a lot of civilians in the process. And uh, uh, I think those parallels between Afghanistan uh, and Vietnam are good parallels. And we see the war bleeding from Afghanistan to Pakistan, just like we saw Kissinger authorize the war to bleed over into Cambodia. And we know uh, the, the terrible results of that uh, bringing to power eventually Pol Pot. And, and the Cambodian killing fields. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting. A anyone in power right now, of course, wants to learn from uh, mistakes from, from the past. And uh, certainly Vietnam is a good example. But what do you think is the real reason? Did this conference have to happen, this, this State Department conference on the history of Indochina? A lot of people thinking this is just giving uh, these war criminals, as you call them, a platform to continue to talk about their policies. Um, I know for years and years, uh, Secretary Kissinger simply said, that the reason that the U.S. didn't win the Vietnam War because Congress cut off funding, um, it didn't seem yesterday, based on what I saw, that he is changing his tune much. He's not remorseful at all. He's been responsible. He was responsible for some eight million deaths in Indochina, in uh, Vietnam, South, North. Uh, Cambodian Laos. Uh, he's very arrogant when it comes to his uh, role in history. Uh, there's a number of investigations around the world of, of his war crimes, including in places like Chile. They'd love to get him on the stand. Uh, but I, I, sometimes I think the State Department is tone deaf. We talk about inside the beltway. Well, there's also inside Foggy Bottom. Uh, so it's like, a, it's like a dead zone within a, a, a zone of ignorance. Uh, and uh, it was just the, the timing of this. I, I would also also see, say that Holbrook, we, we look at uh, him helping to craft Kissinger's policies. We had this uh, terrible comment uh, attributed to Cole Br Holbrook saying, uh, Pakistan's army's first priority is to attack the Pakistani Taliban, not to engage in flood relief. I go back to the CIA archives and I find out that Holbrook was involved in Vietnam policy when we were actually uh, making rain there. The Air Force had a project called Intermediary Compatriot, also known as Operation Popeye, seeding clouds to interdict uh, supplies coming from North Vietnam and the Ho Chi Minh Trail through Laos to South Vietnam, washed away entire villages in the process. Uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, the U.S. signed a convention against weather modification, but uh, I think maybe it's uh, time to take a look at uh, maybe Holbrook is going back to his old bag of tricks, 
consulting with Mr. Kissinger, and, uh, and, and maybe they're pulling old tricks out of Vietnam and applying them uh, to uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Certainly an interesting meeting of the minds, one uh, Secretary Clinton probably didn't think a few years ago that would be happening. Real briefly, a lot of critics also comparing uh, some of those policies that uh, Henry Kissinger sort of authored and was behind the wheel of in Vietnam to, um, to some of the drone attacks of today. I mean, are you hearing in any of your research of people making that connection as well? Well, certainly the, the drone attacks are said to be more targeted, but we know they, uh, you know, there's one terrorist found in a village. They wipe out the entire village, kill all the people in the village. We, we saw that in Vietnam with the indiscriminate B-52, Operation Rolling Thunder, that just carpet bombed South Vietnam and North Vietnam and Laos, and uh, uh, many, many civilians were killed in the process. Again, Holbrook was involved, so was Kissinger. I think we see, we're seeing back to the future here in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And certainly you're not the only one. RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen.